Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video I'd like to share with you a time lapse that was taken from a seven part live lesson series that was recorded for members. Now in this seven part lesson series, we take a look at combining pen and ink with watercolor washes to create a line and wash image of an interesting train in a crowded city. Now of course this complete series, which is filmed and uncut and, and presented in real time, is available to members at thevirtualinstructor.com. If you want to learn more about our membership program, which includes video courses, weekly live lessons like this one, uh, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can go check out our program. Everyone starts off with a week-long trial for free. Again, there's a link in the description below. Now in this video, we're going to start off by taking a look at some of the live broadcast before we get into the actual time lapse. I hope you enjoy. All right, so before we get into things, let's go ahead and get rid of the reference image here real quick, and we'll talk a little bit about the materials that we're going to be using for this series. Um, as you can see over here on the right side of your screen, I've already taped off the, the space that I'm going to be working in. Um, this is hot press watercolor paper, and I'm actually using Canson hot press watercolor paper. I really love the Canson hot press watercolor paper. It is actually absolutely fantastic. Um, I've already taped it off as I just mentioned um, and the area that I've taped off here um, is seven inches by eight and a half inches or approximately that size that's pretty much proportional to the reference that we're working from. If you do tape off or plan out the boundaries of your artwork um, in a way that's proportional to the reference after you've already got all your compositional issues worked out, then that is definitely helpful because you can look at the areas of space around the different subjects and make comparisons that way as well. Um, it's always good to work with boundaries <laughs> instead of just starting on a large sheet of paper because you're losing out on that ability to make comparisons like how far away from the edge of the pitcher plane is the train. And we can make those comparisons, of course, when we have a proportional size already cropped off here. Uh, I'm going to be using an H graphite pencil to sketch out everything initially here. I'm going to be drawing very light. And of course, I'm not going to be adding any shading or any type of value with the H pencil here. We're just going to be concentrating on basically the contour lines. I'm going to be drawing very, very light. And I hope it shows up here. Of course, things are going to get a whole lot darker when we start applying the ink to the surface. But in the initial stages, I want to keep the graphite applications very, very light. That's why I'm using an H pencil. Uh, I'm going to be going back to my Steedler pigment liners for this uh, demonstration. In fact, I picked up two sets uh, earlier today, um, and uh, I did that only because it, the second one was 50% off, so I, I've never seen that before, so <laughs> I bought two sets because I do run through these pens very quickly. Um, this particular set has a 0 0.05 millimeter all the way up to a 0 0.8 millimeter. I don't see us using 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. Probably going to be sticking with these three uh, lower level pens here, or lower width pens, smaller width pens uh, for this drawing. You can use any brand that you wish. Of course, um, I really love these Steedler pens. They're, they work just like the Micron pens, which are super popular, except they seem to last a little bit longer and their tips seem to be a little bit stronger. That's one thing that really drives me crazy about disposable technical drawing pens like this is the tips just kind of wear out so quickly, but the Steedler pens seem to have uh, pretty strong tips on them. So uh, I really like these over the Micron pens. I know a lot of people love the Micron pens. The Micron pens are a little bit cheaper you pay a little bit more for the Steedler pens, but I really feel like they're worth it. I will be using Cotman watercolors when we get to it. I haven't got to, I haven't even got the watercolor over here because I know we're not going to get to it tonight. And uh, when we get to that, I'll talk a little bit more about the watercolor. I also have a kneaded eraser. Uh, I typically these days only use a kneaded eraser for just about anything, but uh, I'll be using a kneaded eraser to lift up any remaining portions of graphite or any bits of graphite that remain on the surface after we're finished with the pen and ink applications. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to get your drawing in the appropriate place on your drawing surface. In this case, I started with it, the overall shape of the train, making comparisons between the edge of the pitcher plane and the edge of the train on either side. And then, of course, once we had that larger shape, which was basically just a rectangle in place, we could go in and start adding smaller shapes. Of course, these are the details. Um, so it's always a good idea to think about the overall shapes of the subjects you draw when you're starting your drawing. 
course, there's lots of different ways to start a drawing with accuracy. You can use the grid technique, you can use sighting or measuring. Um, but I like to, in most circumstances, if I can get away with it, just draw the larger shapes to begin with. Then once we had our graphite sketch in place, of course, with an H pencil, we don't want those graphite lines to show through. It was time to start making our pen and ink applications. And for this drawing, I stuck with the 0.1 millimeter pen by Stiedler for the entire drawing process. Now, as you'll notice here, once we've got some of the initial contour lines or the outlines in place, uh, we go back in with a bit of hatching to begin the process of developing some of the values. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color. It's incredibly important. It's perhaps the most important element of art of the seven elements. So it's very important to develop a range of value, but of course you need to keep in mind that uh, you're gonna be adding watercolor washes, or in this case, we added watercolor washes over the top, and that also would affect the value. So in this case, we didn't wanna create a complete pen and ink drawing. Uh, we wanted some of the values to remain a little bit lighter than what we wanted the finished image to be because we would be applying those watercolor washes after the pen and ink drawing was in place. Now I chose to use only hatching for this, so I tried to minimize any of the lines crossing over each other. Just because stylistically I like this to look a little bit better than uh, cross hatching, and of course, again, we were adding the watercolor later in the process, so uh, keeping with just hatching uh, allowed us to uh, have a little bit more of the white of the paper showing through here. So after the train was in place and uh, the shadow underneath it, it was time to work our way to the background, of course, developing some of the contour lines for the architectural elements behind the main subject. And of course, since these elements were further away from the viewer, we wanted them to appear a little bit lighter in value. Typically, you'll notice that objects that are further away from the viewer are going to be lighter in value. There's going to be less contrast in value. And a lot of times, the actual color temperature of those objects are a little bit cooler. Um, but in this particular case, we didn't want to go too crazy with adding hatching in the background, making the contrast a little bit stronger, um, and of course, um, making some of the value values a little bit darker as well. So although we did add quite a bit of hatching, we didn't take it to the same level as we did on the train, obviously, because the train is closer to the viewer. Now, of course, the people are a little bit closer than some of the architectural elements. So we did push the value range a little bit further there, but of course, we didn't bring it to a complete full range of value with the figures because again we wanted the train to stand out amongst all of the other elements within the scene and of course in order to do that we needed to have the greatest contrast in those locations. And then of course after our pen and ink applications were complete we could use a kneaded eraser and remove any of the remaining graphite marks. Then it was time to start with our watercolor washes and you can see here I started with a very light application of ultramarine and then over the top a bit of a mixture of ultramarine and burnt umber here and also a bit of burnt sienna as well. Uh, originally I had planned to use some of my Cotman watercolors which are produced by Windsor & Newton but in the end I decided to go with my field watercolor set by Windsor & Newton. Um, and I decided also to kind of keep the palette uh, relatively limited. So um, all of the colors that we saw in the photo reference, I didn't include. Instead, I tried to bring out some of the more brighter colors and uh, tried, tried to, to keep the palette relatively limited to mostly primary colors and neutral colors. So you'll see a lot of reds, yellows, and blues slowly develop in this image, especially the strong red on the train here. And uh, with watercolor, of course, people approach watercolor in different ways. I like to layer watercolor. So basically I'll, I'll lay down a couple of layers of the color, allow it to dry, and then go back over the top of it and gradually intensify it. And that's kind of the approach that we took with this particular painting here. That really gives you a lot of control over the watercolor applications. Of course, some people like to just lay down the watercolor and let it dance on the surface here and there. And I like to do that to a certain degree, but with a line and wash image like this, you do need to have a little little bit more precision because we are dealing with some contour lines that are already in place with the pen and ink applications, obviously. So some of these uh, applications may look like I'm using black, but it's actually a combination of that dark brown, that uh, burnt umber, and also uh, that uh, darker blue. Well, it's not necessarily a darker blue, but ultramarine. So by combining the ultramarine and uh, the burnt umber, we have a little bit more control over the color temperature of the black that we create. And then after our watercolor washes were applied, our pen and ink and watercolor image of a train was complete.
Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. If you're new to the channel here on YouTube, I suggest that you subscribe. We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media and subject matter. If you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, you can do so. There's a link in the description below. You can go check that out. And if you want to check out our membership program, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses, which which also include videos and downloadable eBooks, as well as the weekly live lessons and weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, as well as a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. There's a link in the description below. You can go check out our program. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.